Veterans, members of the Iwo Jima Association of America, families, friends, and fellow Marines, on behalf of all who wear the Eagle Globe and Anchor, Sergeant Major Barrett and I want to extend our heartfelt gratitude for your service and fidelity to our great nation. To all participants of the 2012 Reunion of Honor Tour, and on the occasion of the 67th anniversary of the Battle of Iwo Jima, we're honored to welcome each of you to this year's return to the Black Sand Beaches. We join you in recognizing the sacrifices of those who have fought during this epic battle. For all service veterans attending the reunion, we want you to know how much we respect and appreciate the courage, tenacity, and fortitude you displayed during this epic defining point in the history of our nation and our Corps. It is difficult to imagine what your thoughts must have been when you learned you would be assaulting the eight square mile island only 600 miles from the Empire of Japan. Your actions made history. The stage was set. The 3rd, 4th, and 5th Divisions of the 5th Amphibious Corps, transported ashore by sailors and coast guardsmen, supported by the Army Air Corps, and the naval aviators and guns of the U.S. 5th Fleet, would assault the heavily defended island fortress of Iwo Jima. Their opposition, 20,000 tenacious Japanese veterans, who at the direction of their commander, General Kurabayashi, had abandoned the reckless bonsai tactics of previous fights, and would rely instead on the proven tactics of defense in depth and coordinated, overlapping, interlocking direct and indirect killing fires. These soldiers were tasked to defend the gateway to their homeland. The volcanic island was part of the prefecture of Tokyo, and for the first time, U.S. forces threatened the sacred soil of Japan. It would be defended to the death. Years had been spent transforming the island's sulfur mines into a fortified underground citadel with more than 1,000 gun emplacements and pillboxes connected by miles of tunnels, including underground headquarters and hospitals. The Imperial soldiers were ready. At 0900 on 19 February 1945, after a morning pre-landing bombardment heavier than the one directed at the coast of Normandy in June 1944, Operation Detachment initiated. 500 transport craft disembarked eight battalions of Marines onto the 3,000 yard south beach of Iwo Jima. Once the beach was crowded with vehicles and men, the Japanese unleashed a torrent of fire from anti-aircraft and coastal guns, mortars, and artillery. The pre-registered fires had a devastating effect on the landing force, but the Marines relentlessly pressed the attack. Calling on their own supporting arms, and working as a team, the soldiers from the sea methodically eliminated enemy defensive positions and moved inland. At the end of D-Day, 30,000 Marines, including six infantry regiments and six artillery battalions, were ashore. With the support of over 600 aircraft from Task Forces 52 and 58, as well as the naval guns of six battleships, eight cruisers, and nine destroyers, assisted by more than 40 assorted gunboats and rocket craft, the Marines managed to split the island at its narrowest point. When compared with D-Day on the U.S. assaulted beaches of Normandy, the casualty rate on D-Day at Iwo Jima was nearly twice as high on a beach frontage less than one-third the size. On day two, after landing tanks, more artillery and elements of the reserve force, Marines took ownership of Motoyama Airfield No. 1. By day four, Marines ascended the stronghold of Mount Suribachi, and on its summit, they proudly raised Old Glory. This action by five Marines and one Navy corpsman was captured in a hastily shot photograph and would come to symbolize the fighting spirit of all United States service men and women in World War II. The flag raising atop Mount Suribachi rallied the nation and became the most reproduced combat photograph in American history. To this day, it's an icon of our Corps' fighting spirit. It inspired the Secretary of the Navy, James Forrestal, to utter those famous words that the flag raising on Mount Suribachi means a Marine Corps for the next 500 years. Despite the boost in morale felt by all who witnessed the stars and stripes flying over the island, there was still much work to be done before Iwo Jima was secured.
The Japanese defenders were rarely seen moving on the island and continued to fight their battle plan from inside of it. They defended in depth and maximized use of their fortified positions, interlocking fires and blockhouses connected by subterranean corridors. Although Marines and their faithful corpsmen suffered grave casualties, they relentlessly pressed the assault and reduced the enemy. With flamethrowers, satchel charges, supporting arms, grenades, rifles, and bayonets, Marines steadily pushed on, combining the effects of their weapons and harnessing their courage. Fighting through places with names like Turkey Knob, The Meat Grinder, The Amphitheater, Radar Hill, and finally, Katano Point, the Marines persevered until they reached the north tip of Iwo Jima and effectively secured the island. All told, it was a 36-day team effort. The Marine landing forces led the way, but they were assisted by Coast Guard, Naval Amphibious and Transport Shipping, Naval Artillery, Army and Navy Aviation, and Navy Seabees. Later in the days and weeks following the end of organized resistance, the U.S. Army's 147th Infantry Division assumed control and would continue the difficult job of mopping up remaining pockets of enemy. Enabling victory at Iwo Jima, he showed tenacity and determination alongside giants like Jack Lucas, George Whalen, Tony Stein, Jack Loomis, and John Bazalone. You kept faith with your brothers and wrote a new chapter of our Marine Corps history. Iwo Jima veterans of all services earned more awards for valor than have been earned during any other battle in American history. 27 Medals of Honor were issued for the actions on or in support of Operation Detachment, and more than half of those were given posthumously. The bravery of this battle was such that a month later, the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet Admiral Nimitz stated, among the men who fought on Iwo Jima, uncommon valor was a common virtue. The cost of victory was high. Nearly 7,000 U.S. servicemen were killed and upwards of 20,000 wounded. Among those wounded was Commandant Vandegrift's son, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vandegrift, Jr., a battalion commander in the 24th Marines. Of the 20,000 Japanese defenders, only 216 became prisoners. All others fought to their deaths and perished. Iwo Jima was the only battle during World War II where U.S. casualties, both killed in action and wounded in action, exceeded those of the Japanese defenders. Ultimately, the sacrifice and blood and the effort it took to secure Iwo Jima enabled the use of its strategic airfields as emergency landing sites for bombers and as bases for their fighter escorts. This saved the lives of untold numbers of U.S. air crews and directly contributed to the surrender of Japan and the end of World War II. At the heart of this hard-won victory was the sacrifice, the fighting spirit, and the selflessness of each of you. You epitomized the indomitable spirit that has characterized Marines throughout our history. The determination you showed on Iwo Jima was also evidenced at places like Bella Wood, the Chosen Reservoir, Way City, Fallujah, and now in Marsha. This spirit is the essence of our core. It defines who we are and what we stand for. This same spirit lives on in our Marines serving in harm's way today. Your actions 67 years ago on that tiny island continue to be an inspiration to all the Marines and sailors of today's Marine Corps. As you gather with family and brothers in arms in fellowship to honor your friends who never left the island and those who have passed on, we join you in celebrating their lives. The Commandant and I want you to remember that your Marine Corps family and American patriots everywhere remain eternally proud of your fidelity, your heroic actions, and your contributions to our freedom. In contrast to the chaos you originally experienced, we hope that during this visit, you feel the cathartic power of a reunion in peace. May the now tranquil beaches of Iwo Jima welcome you and the Japanese veterans, warriors of both sides of this conflict, and see you stand together in recognition of those who fought there. Thank you for keeping faith with your brothers, our Corps, and our country. We wish all Iwo Jima veterans, their families and friends, a memorable reunion. God bless each of you, and Semper Fidelis.